and we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It is March 1st. Uh, we're doing a live chat here tonight with uh, Mick Kittredge of Kringle Candle. Melanie, Mr. Kong's mom, decided to join us by popular demand by a lot of folks. Can't say I blame them. Um, but so, Mick, Melanie, how are you guys doing tonight? Great. Thanks for having us. Thanks for getting this all put together. Appreciate it. It's been a little while since our last uh, live stream. Yes, it has. Yeah. It has. And there's been a lot of stuff happening in Kringle uh, since then. That is a fact. Um, do we want to jump right in or should we uh, find out how Melanie's day has been, yeah. your day has been? What's uh, what's new in your world? Yeah. Melanie, how about you? Oh, I just uh, I took my kid to the doctor for a well child visit. <laughs> right. All right. Oh, so it's super exciting. So that's, I, I haven't really done much else today. Just puttered around the house, so. All right. How about you, Brett? Um, cold, warm weather. It's just fluctuating like crazy down here. I know what it is up by you. We but, got eight uh, inches of snow last night. Yeah, no, we didn't get that lucky. We got a little bit of frost. That's about it. Well, the good news is it's uh, it's good candle burning weather, so, <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> exactly. All right. So so we're here to chat about the new country candle change. Yeah, that's right? that's really the main uh, topic here. It's the big the big thing. Um, so I know you guys went soy in the Kringle candle line almost uh, two years ago now, right? It's been yep. about two years. So why why now? Why ditch the paraffin? Go with the soy on the country line. Well, there was a lot of factors that went into this decision. Um, first and foremost, the product reviews that we've been getting since we switched to soy have been absolutely stellar. Um, it's been wonderful to see everyone's reaction to how clean the candles are burning, how strong the fragrances are, um, and just everyone's overwhelming positive experience. Our sales have been trending up dramatically ever since the shift. And um, I think customers are really appreciating the difference. Um, you know, it's it's a lot more expensive to make soy candles than it is paraffin candles these days. Um, when I first started uh, quoting soy wax, um, it was probably at around 62 cents a pound in the bulk like futures market. Now we're trending at over two dollars a pound. So, you know, it's more than double what paraffin costs right now. Um, it's really expensive. Uh, but in my humble opinion. I think it makes a far superior product and that's what we're all about here. So when we made the shift in Kringle to soy, we added about 30, uh, 33% more fragrance oil per ounce of wax. And we switched to the soy wax, which is a lot more expensive. So the product itself costs us more to make, but we feel as though customers are having a much better experience with the candles and they keep coming back and buying more. So that's, that's better for us. Uh, in the long run. Um, so that was one of the major reasons why we wanted to shift is because we've had such a positive experience with the soy wax that, you know, we felt like we could improve the country candle line by making that shift. And I started experimenting in the lab about a year ago with the country candle blend and I got better results. Um, I found myself taking home a lot more Kringle candles to burn than country candles. And at one point, country candle was actually stronger than Kringle candle. Because I don't know if you remember, we we initially launched the country candle line uh, so that we could use stronger fragrance oils. Because the original Kringle paraffin candle was very difficult to keep white looking. That yeah. clear paraffin wax, if you had a little tinge of color to the fragrance oils, um, they'd turn yellow and they would shift over time. And it was like candle nightmares <laughs> yeah. that I used to have. You know, Before we opened Kringle in 2010, I remember staying up late, making all the candles for months, and then going to put them on the shelves, take them out of the box, and they're all bright yellow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, got to redo these. So a lot of work has gone into it, and we wanted to bring all that work and apply it to our Country Candle brand. So um, it actually took quite a while to get the burn right in Country Candle because the colored wax and the slightly larger vessel really changes the dynamic of the burn. Um, so we did have to use slightly different wicks, uh, but I still think that the performance and the burn quality is is about on par with uh, with the Kringle line. And I think people are going to be happy with it. Right. So I think you had mentioned, um, I don't know if you mentioned just now, but you're able to put about 40 percent more oil in the in the country. Exactly. So the country candle, the, the soy wax is a lot more dense than paraffin. So this is going from a 24 ounce candle 
to a 26 ounce candle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's about 10% denser um, than paraffin. So in order to get this to fill, you know, above the shoulder, we had to put more in there. So you're getting two more ounces of wax. And with that, we're putting in about 40% more fragrance um, per candle when you take into account the additional two ounces plus the higher percentage uh, that we're adding. So these should be dramatically stronger than what everyone um, has been accustomed to in the country candle line. And I'm, I'm really curious to see Melanie's opinion when you get them, because I know- I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> I know you, haven't, uh, you haven't been the biggest country candle fan. I think in general, you're just not a big paraffin fan in general. And, um, you know, I, I've got to agree with you. I, I, I totally agree with you. In fact, I think watching uh, that review you gave us all those years ago, like really like <laughs> ate at my soul and put me back to work in the lab. And I said, I'm going to get this right. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> no, if, if anything, no, thank you. <laughs> us better. Yeah. And I, I, I truly appreciate it because um, I've never been so happy with the products that we're making today in the, you know, almost 14 years of being in the candle world. I've never been more proud of what we're putting out than I am right now. So in, in a lot of ways, I got to thank you for that because honest feedback is the only thing that, you know, is going to make us better and push us into the future and um, took it to heart. So thank you. Honestly, I think it's amazing that you're actually willing to take feedback and, mm -hmm and to make changes and to continue to innovate. I think that's really important because I think it's very easy to get stagnant when it comes to your product. You know, you just kind of get used to doing the same thing and it, it works mostly. You guys knock it off. Sorry, my dogs are going nuts. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, I think it's important to continue to innovate and if you can make things better, why not do that? Yeah, completely agreed. Completely agreed. So, you know, with that in mind, um, there were also some some business decisions why we wanted to move to soy. Um, we've got uh, two uh, large areas, uh, two bulk tanks for liquid uh, wax that we take deliveries on. Um, so I don't know if, if you guys are aware of this, but not only do we manufacture our own candles, but we also manufacture candles for a lot of other companies as well. So we contract manufacture. Um, so we used to have a, a pretty big account that used to use a lot of paraffin. Um, and we've since parted ways with that account so we can pick up some additional accounts. And um, nobody's really asking for paraffin these days. They all want soy or a soy blend. So, you know, moving away from carrying liquid bulk paraffin to carrying soy and a soy blend is really helping us in that um, arena as well. So we've gotten a ton of inquiries from high-end candle companies, and we're starting to make a lot of products for other companies. Can't tell you who, uh, but it's exciting. And um, I think people are starting to notice that we're doing something right out here. Good. Now, um, with the colored wax on the, on the soy, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know if you guys can see this, but we do have this little discoloration you have it on there. This is like the best one to mm -hmm. look at there. So um, this is what called blooming. Yep. So this is a natural crystallization that happens with the soy wax. Um, it's fragrance specific. It doesn't happen on every single fragrance, but in many cases it's going to happen. And I, it really looks to me like modeling and paraffin. You know how the, the paraffin would kind of give mm -hmm. that that similar look. And um, I think a lot of people are afraid to use the all natural soy wax with color because this happens. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to embrace it because this candle burns so much better because of it. I would rather have a candle that burns consistently top to bottom, even consumption, good flame heights, no puny wick syndrome and throws great fragrance. And yeah, it looks like a paraffin candle with a little bit of crystallization that happens. And you know what? Really I'm does. fine with that. I think it makes it look more like a fruit preserve or a jam or a jelly. Yeah. And it's just funny that we're having this conversation about wax and a candle all these years later, because dad actually had to fight that same exact battle when he was putting a lot of fragrance in the paraffin back in the day. People used to think that there was something wrong with the candles, that, that modeling effect. They said, mm -hmm. what's wrong with it? Did it freeze or did something happen to it? And he had to educate people that says, actually, that's just a sign that there's a lot of fragrance oil in the wax. And um, they used that for you know 30 years and, and really pushed the idea that this look um, was a high quality look. And that's, that's where they built it all from. So it's kind of interesting that 
we're also having this conversation now about soy. Right. My gosh. So yeah, so I've been burning um, Cosmic Cupcake, which is definitely the standout of the country for me. Okay. Um, you go back to, to the wicks, right? So these are going to have to be trimmed. Yep. More so than the, the standard Kringle line. So let me just explain one one thing just so you can kind of get it just now. Kringle candles, the opening, if you kind of compare it to the bottom of a country candle, it's about a half an inch narrower than the base of, of a country candle. So country is a little bit wider. So wicks are essentially a filter and it's filtering all that wax and drawing all that fragrance and all that color up through the wick and then it's burning, right? So it, it, it has the potential to clog. Um, now with the country candle, because it's wider, you got to filter more of that wax through for every inch that the candle burns down. So there's more of it going through it. So we had to use a slightly beefier wick in order to, you know, not see puny wick syndrome. Um, sometimes you're going to find that it is the same wick as the Kringle candle line, but we actually use a different style in this one. That's instead of being woven, it's knit. So the knitting of the wick fabric will allow the fuel to kind of come in through the sides and through all different angles and it doesn't clog as easily, but it still gives you a really nice, even consistent burn. But for me, I like to just give it a quick trim before I burn and, and you're good. And they're easy to trim. They just break off if you just reach in and grab it with your fingers or a paper towel and should be, should be pretty good. But I let these burn a long time. You should have uh, about the same results as you do with, with the Kringle line, but the color makes it a little bit more challenging. And so with the burn time here, so you're going from 20, you're going from 24 to 26 ounces on this. Um, I know that it still says 100 to 150 hours mm -hmm. on the bottom. What's been your average in your testing? Um, it depends on the fragrance, but I, I'd say it's over 100. It's probably in the 120 range is, is my guess, uh, it, but it drastically uh, depends on if you trim the wicks. So if you leave the wicks long and you light it, you're going to have a bigger flame, which is going to have a higher consumption rate. But if you trim the wicks before each burn, you're going to get a, a nice, nice long burn. Okay. And now are there any um, color limitations with the, the soy compared to- I actually to find that you, you have more breadth of color with the soy because it's like, um, I don't know, it's like uh, printing on white paper versus on like clear, you know, it really like makes it bright. So we can get some brighter neon kind of uh, pastel colors, whereas the paraffin would kind of be a little more muted for some of those spring type colors. And I don't know if you notice, like over time, paraffin kind of goes clear, like mm -hmm. as the, the paraffin ages. So the colors start to fade. Um, you, you really aren't going to notice that with the soy wax. So they're going to hold their color longer and kind of stay, stay pretty. So, okay. And so, I know one thing um, I talked about in my review of one of these was um, when I opened them, from the box there were a couple of like kind of sweating on top okay yep so that can happen um you know it's it's funny because normally the paraffin will sweat in the summertime yeah but it seems like the soy can sometimes sweat when it gets cold because the um the molecular structure kind of squeezes together when it gets cold so it's kind of pushing out some of the fragrance oil but it shouldn't be a problem um it wasn't like so much that you were dumping the candle out oh, no that's um, having to be in paraffin in the summertime yeah. Exactly. The, wax, the seal gets all discolored and yeah. So um, should burn just the same, uh, but it gives you a really good cold throw. So I'm not complaining. Yeah. No. Uh, so now that we have the spring and summer scents in soy, what's the plan for the rest of the lineup? Oh boy. Um, really depends. Um, I want to see what customers feedback is, you know, first and foremost, I want to see, you know, how people like them. I think that everyone's uh, enjoying them so far. The the strength reviews have been pretty stellar. I don't know. How is that cosmic cupcake for strength for you? Uh, it's like on a 10 or 11. It's pretty strong. That's, that's pretty good. I don't think um, we had any country candles score quite that high, maybe with the exception. No, it's it's uh, pretty uh, strong. I, I can put it in the basement I'm working and it travels all the way up the stairs and it just, Goes. All right. All right. So, so that's good. Um, I'm, I'm fully anticipating making a full shift in the whole line. Um, but we're going to let them sell out and we're going to remake them on a rolling change. Um, okay. we still have quite a bit of inventory. Um, probably you'll, you'll start to see more turning over. Some of the better selling fragrances will come out. Um, soon we've got a, a handful of more, more country candles that were already out of stock on that we need to, to remake. So you're going to start to see them over the course of the year. And I would say by 2024, the whole line should be switched over if not sooner. Okay, so we got a few more months. Yep. Yep. So, 
Melanie's excited. I can't I wait for you to burn these because <laughs> you're, you're probably our biggest critic. So I want to know what you think. I love that. Yeah, I, I'm super excited. Like I just, so I just got the reserve line and the, uh, the tumblers on Monday. Okay. Um, so good. Like the, the spring scents are really, really amazing. The only one that's thrown me off as a spring scent is the, the tea, the, the London. Okay. okay. Yeah. So <laughs> that one is a remake like... of an old fragrance. That one was black yeah. tea and honey back in the day. That was one of our like original, like oh, 2010, cool. 11 uh, candles. And, and I really wanted to bring it back, but I couldn't see how that might be more, you know, herbal and fall kind of, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hearty. It's not as light. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, it just kind of screamed London. And that was kind of the, the vibe we were going for. Like it's yeah. tea time. Yeah. Uh, so here's, here's a question from Carol in the, the chat here. I'm not sure if anybody asked what's the expected shelf life of the soy country, depending mm -hmm. on how carefully they have stored, of course. Um, shelf life should be about the same. I mean, paraffin, you know, has a really long shelf life. But does it really, you know, that's the question, you know, paraffin will hold up, but the modeling will degrade and go away and it won't look as nice over time. Um, the paraffin, sometimes the, the fragrance oil is not actually bonded in a um, modeling paraffin wax. It doesn't have a binder in it. So technically it's a molecule of paraffin wax next to a molecule of fragrance oil. And they kind of coexist in this um, suspension. Um, and, that means that the fragrance oil can come directly in contact with the wick material and it can actually eat away at the wicks over time. So if you'll notice like in like old school Yankee candles, like the old black bands, the wicks start to change colors. And if you light it, sometimes they'll just even put themselves out because the fibers of the cotton have been completely destroyed from the acidic fragrance oil over time. Whereas soy definitely, you know, blends better with the fragrance oil. It really just becomes one um, because they're both oils and, um, in my experience, the soy has just as long of a shelf life so far anyway, um, as long as it's stored in a cool, cool area. Soy sometimes gets a bad rap for shelf life from a manufacturing standpoint. So if we were to hold it in liquid form under heat over a long period of time, it has a, a potential to go rancid um, because it's actually a food product. So this is hydrogenated soybean oil. It's the same thing that you get in vegan butters and in you know popcorn and things like that. It's it's basically just harder hydrogenated and um, you know technically it's edible. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> won't taste very good, <laughs> and the fragrance oils are not. But um, but it's uh, it should be should be just fine. So for collectors who want to store them long term, as long as they're inside and not out in the sun, you should be fine. Okay. Uh, Heather here asked, uh, do the country candles need to cure the new ones? So soy curing, um, you know, some people believe that you need to let soy sit for a long period of time uh, in order for the fragrance oils to be really strong. And I just, I personally don't um, believe that. Now, some people may have had different experiences with that. I have not. We do all of our testing in the lab. We make the candle, we burn the candle immediately. We get, um, all the evaluations of uh, strength and burn off of a fresh made candle. So I would say no. Um, but some people swear by it and say that the candles get stronger the longer they sit. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, say it, there's not a chance, but we don't do our testing that way. Okay. Does anybody else have any uh, country candle questions? Cause we, we have some other topics we want to discuss uh, here tonight as well. Oh, there's some Halloween chatter already. I, I knew it was going to happen. Halloween. <laughs> I wonder what we should do for Country Candle and Halloween this year. I actually don't have anything planned for Country Candle this year for Halloween. I've got a lot of cool three wicks, and I've got some really cool new fragrances planned for Kringle, um, and maybe some new vessels, but I'm not sure if they're going to make it in time for Halloween. But, um, you know, one thing that is really new and exciting is our new three wicks. Um, we just made the transition to um, all 100% soy in the three wicks. So we're still selling out of some of our old stock. So if it has a label on the front in a three wick that, you know, looks like the, the, the traditional label stock. It's really bright. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it has a label on it, that's the old style. But the new style is these new uh, printed 
painted three wick. So everything in the 100% soy is going to be this. Oh, I need to get it not as hot here. What's going on? I'm like being interrogated. Um, <laughs> So I okay. took this one right off the uh, off the line today, and um, we've got about 32 fragrances that are going to be launching in the the not so distant future. Um, a lot of old ones that are coming back, a lot of new fragrances that have never been released in any of the other uh, candle lines, and then we're starting to remake some of the ones that were out of stock in in the old soy para blend. Um, but all I can tell you is that these things are amazing. They burn really, really clean, no discoloration. I, Melanie, I mean, you had a pretty good they're, experience. They're so, so they are, they, if you want more oomph, like strength and throw out of the Kringle fragrances, definitely go for the three wicks. Like I've always had a pretty good solid medium experience with the two wick tumblers, but those three wicks definitely like game changer if you are looking for a lot more strength and throw. I got to turn these lights down a little bit so that you can actually see on my camera because it's like blinding. Are you guys seeing that as well? Yeah. yeah white balance really is all. Right. On one. Bear with me. One second. One second. Yeah. So people, uh, the reserve candles. Um, I actually asked Mick this question to, was it yesterday or today? I don't know. But it, there might be a restock there. Right, Mick? All right. Sorry. What did you say? Um, there's hopefully a restock or the reserve. Candle. Working on it. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> that sold way better and way faster than expected. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about the reserve line. This launch, man, nine fragrances and what four have already sold out. Yep, yep. A um, couple of my favorites uh, that we've ever made are in the reserve line. Two of them, I think you'll know what they are: strawberry and. Uh, the jelly donut. That strawberry is like wild. Um, it's really good. It you know, it's not good. often that you, you know, crack open a new candle and, and you smell it and, and you pause for a second and say, I haven't smelled anything like this in candle before. Because I mean, there's just so much new development going on in the candle world. It's like, you know, recycling of ideas, you know, from 10 years ago, bringing something new. I mean, you know, you just see the same thing kind of over and over again. And, and it really does um, create an impact when you, you crack something open and you haven't experienced that before. And to me, it just brought me right to a fresh strawberry patch. And I mean, it was unique with that tomato vine in there a little bit of that dirt i don't know i loved it it's one of my favorites and that jelly donut is just nuts so we're bringing them back crazy don't worry they're coming back um it's going to be another limited run so the company that we decorate our jars through they're having a, a hard time keeping up right now with demand so that's where our bottleneck is we're waiting on our jars to come in so they're getting painted and um once we receive them we're going to do another run but we've got a lot more reserve candles coming this year i'd say at least another 20. Oof. um yeah there's a lot and um some pretty unique fragrances that are going to be coming out um hopefully hopefully the subsequent launches are as successful as as this last one but we're going to restock those. We're going to restock fire. I know that one was a really popular one. Um, and cannabis is coming back. So I'm very excited about that coming back. So that I one, thought that one sold out. Oh yeah. That one sold yeah. out. I mean, we made a lot of that one too. We were banking on that doing well and it sold out in like 24 hours. I mean, yeah. It was crazy. Nuts. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very potent. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because most people would say, "Oh, you know, I want to burn a candle to get rid of that smell." Yeah, <laughs> uh, not not you know add more of it. Um, so I can't tell you know exactly why people are burning it. It's either to say, "Oh no, that's just the candle over there," um, <laughs> a good it's excuse and scapegoat. Uh, it's a great gift, but the fragrance itself is all the pleasant things of, of cannabis and not as much of the skunky and kind of smoky, dirty smell. So if you're, if you're into that, it's, uh, it's all the pretty and none of the bad. In my opinion. <laughs> so that's coming back as well. And we, uh, we are also launching three really cool fragrances probably in June. It's going to have a new decoration on it. I don't have any examples here, but unicorn poops coming back. Nice. So that one was, that one was, another crazy seller. I mean, we sold 
like 4,000 units in 24 hours. And I mean, that was a joke when we came yeah. out with it. I don't know if you remember, Brett, but we, I teased that in um, Candle Dancers, Candle Corner. Mm -hmm. right? I remember yep. that. Yeah. And if, if, uh, if we get 200 people to say they'll pre-order this, I'll actually make it. You know, and I thought it was a total joke and people jumped on it and it became our number one selling skew for that year within 24 hours. And we just didn't have enough time to remake it that year and put it back into the schedule. And, and then people started selling it on eBay for like $250 a jar. And we sold this at $20 for a pre-order. Right. So, right. Um, that, you know, was, <laughs> that was pretty wild. Um, and, and they were selling too. That was the crazy part. It wasn't just listed. Like they actually sold. Um, so that just, just, you know, opened us up to saying, all right, well, what else can we do with pre-orders? Because if we know that people are going to buy it, you know, we can make to order. And as long as people are willing to give us a little time to make it, um, that seemed like a pretty cool idea. And that's what sparked the whole Halloween pre-order that we always did. So we'll see. We've got, no, go we have uh, six, 18 fragrances coming out for Halloween this year in the Kringle line. So exciting. Wow. Lots of cool stuff. That's a lot. Um, so someone had asked me uh, before in, in regards to the reserve, um, two questions really. Um, any thoughts of doing reserves in a wax melt and also mm -hmm. in a potential different vessel because uh, some folks don't necessarily like the, the black because they like to see the flame or maybe making it a little bit more uh, opaque so you can see or the flame. More, more transparent. Or more transparent, right. So I like doing, that? doing a more transparent jar. Um, and I kind of teased it online a little bit and we got kind of negative feedback about the more transparent black because people were saying, well, I've already started collecting these. So this will look different if I, you know, uh, if we change it. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I was actually thinking about trying a black mercury jar for the reserve line mm. at some point, because that is really stunning or maybe even for Halloween. Um, cause I thought that that could be kind of spooky to have a little bit of that glow coming through. Um, it's, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea at all. And I think with some of the vessel changes that I will tease a little bit for, for next year, um, you might see the reserve line shift into one of these new jars um, for next year. I don't know. Let's see. What do I have over here? Melanie, I think got something that you might like right here. So this is a Simeon Orange. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Four wick. This Look thing at all those wicks. Monster. It's, uh, <laughs> 35 ounces. Um, and they are burning really well. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking That's about it. I'm thinking about it. This is just a prototype right now, but it's really nice. It's really guys, nice. So this is my first one that I've burned. I mean, I just got this in a few days ago, so it's burning pretty well. Um, getting a little bit of discoloration in the wax right here, but I think I uh, I can adjust the wicks down one size and get rid of that. But um, I don't know. It's pretty nice. So 35 okay. ounces. It's just, you know, the retail is going to be a little higher. You know, um, for a 35 ounce candle, we're going to have to be MSRP at around $45. So, you know, that's actually $3 less if you took the actual you know, dollars per ounce and applied it. So if you took a you know, Kringle 22 ounce, 30 or 29.50 and divided it by 22 and then multiplied it by 35 to get the dollars per ounce, uh, that'd come out to $47. So it's a little less. So there's a little value there, um, but we're still going to promote and we're still going to do sales and we're still going to do all of that. So, you know, that's the the name of the game. You have to, uh, you have to have the MSRP up there so that we can wholesale it and sell it to distributors and all of that. But it's a pretty unique size. I mean, this thing is massive. I've got two candles that I made for the two of you to test out. So hopefully I can send them out to you guys tomorrow. Maybe you can give me some good feedback and see what you think. But I'm actually for the first time in my entire career in the candle world, uh, nervous that I might be making a shift to a candle that's going to be too strong. I, I've never had that problem before. Everyone says, make it stronger, make it stronger. But these things are potent. Um, you know, so I, I'm curious to see what you think. We might actually have to dial it back a little bit because, I mean, you know, Brett, you were saying that that country candle was an 11 and, and you yeah, had to that was pretty out strong for me. And, you know, let it air out. Uh, if we and put, put the botanicals out there too, this has been a beast as well. Yeah, that imagine really botanicals strong. in this. Um, your whole neighborhood is going to smell it. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's um, maybe a good thing. 
maybe it's maybe it's too much. I don't know. I mean, have you ever experienced that with the candles where it's you know consistently just too strong? Certain fragrances, like yeah, like fresh balsam from Bath and Body Works, that's just like you need to open a window. That's, that's just way too strong. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you think about that? Is that is that the target? Is that the goal? Because I mean, I've been chasing this, you know, this dream of making the candles as strong as I possibly can, and I actually think we're we might be there. And uh, you know, our, our two wicks, I think, are keeping up with a lot of people's larger format candles. So when we go to a larger format, you know, it's kind of kind of crazy. I don't know. Yeah, I think it depends on the situation, right? If you're having a dinner party, you don't want to have a candle that's gonna, you know, take away from like the fresh food and everything that you're you're baking mm. right there. Um, you kind of want to have it almost in the background. Mm. It's uh, uh, it's interesting. I, I find that if I love a fragrance, it can never really be too strong for me, you know. Yeah. You but you gotta love it. But it's those ones that you're on the fence about, or you're like, oh, I don't know, you know. Then it can become overpowering. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna have to let me know. I've got two fragrances made up for both of you, and the ones that you requested. So let's see uh, see what you think, okay. and maybe you can post a little update, and we can tease yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Get them going. Get them going. Uh, how and uh, Bonnie asked, how big were those wine candles? They were like 30 ounces, weren't they? Those were big. Uh, I want to say 26 or 28 26. ounces, but that was a soy para blend, so it wasn't as dense as these. Um, so it was just a little bit narrower than this and a few inches shorter. So, you know, it might have been pushing 30 ounces, but these are even bigger. And then we've got the shorter ones too. So this one's uh, been pretty good for me so far. So anyway. okay, that's a good fragrance. I like that one this year. Yeah. I, I cannot get good. this camera to not be washed out. Yeah. Eh, sorry about that. One thing I'll say, and I, I don't know if you've seen it either, but um, the, people have been really enjoying the, the spring summer fragrances, the, the 12 this year. I think there's a lot for everybody. Um, what went into the whole basically making country all gourmand? Was that like a thought or was that just, it just happened to be that way? So, at the very beginning of Country Candle's existence, we did a lot of gourmand because we couldn't do gourmand in Kringle. It was not possible. The, the, the fragrance oils just had a lot of vanillas and cinnamons and different, different ingredients that had this bright yellow uh, color to it naturally. Um, so that's why Country Candle has a lot more gourmands in them just inherently. And, and you know, fragrance development takes you know, a long time. As, as you both know, we're still working on, on your two candles. And, you know, it takes, you know, sometimes when you want to make an adjustment, six, seven, eight weeks before you get that revision back from the perfumers. And then you make the candle and you test it and you burn it and you ship it. And, you know, it just takes time. So we're still in this, this development mode where, you know, we made the, the switch to, to soy for Kringle, but, you know, we start developing years in advance for some of these fragrances and it just kind of takes time. So Country Candle had always been that, what can we do in Country Candle that we can't do in Kringle? And that was because of the color, we can put darker oils in and that's just kind of how it started. But yeah, you're right. This launch was all gourmand. And if you'll notice, you know, on the Kringle side, it was a little less gourmand. We had the saltwater taffy, but a lot more florals and, and lighter colors. But you're going to see more of those gourmands come to Kringle. But it's harder to keep the wax white, even though it's soy wax. So I, I'm OK if the gourmands just stay, you know. They can, yeah, I know uh, they're not your favorite. <laughs> I know you like the florals, but not your uh, mouth, Brett. <laughs> that's why Mel and I are so good together here. <laughs> but um, you know, we, but we also did a lot of gourmands in, in the reserve line too. You know, so you yeah. know, the, the jelly donut and the strawberries. You know, so not that strawberries are really gourmand, but um, foodie stuff. But you're going to yeah. see more foodie stuff come come to yeah. Crandall um, in the future because I I think our blueberry muffin is probably one of the best blueberry scents on the market i've i've had that out for years i agree I love it that's one of my go-to's um so i think we're going to build off of that blueberry muffin base off the jelly donut base and maybe do a line of donuts you know kind of taking that same uh doughy fried dough note and then adding in some different uh ingredients instead of that raspberry strawberry jam maybe you go in the blueberry muffin direction or blueberry donut direction maybe a chocolate muffin direction a few others cinnamons um, so you're going to see more of that come out for sure. Right. Cause you didn't well, have that donut line. A bake shop collection. A which one? A bake shop collection. Ooh, that might be nice. You yeah. I saw that in the comments here. So. Wait, where are the comments? I'm not seeing any of these. Oh, right. where are the comments on the right? Oh, there we come go. Right yeah. 
<laughs> it took me a while to figure that out too. <laughs> we, need, we need Bonnie to join us on one of these. Yes. Yeah, she says she needs the root beer to come back. I, I need that root beer float to come back too. All right. I, I'm going to give you a little, little uh, insider information. Root beer donut is coming back this year for holiday. Ooh. For holiday. Um, for holiday. So the feedback on that one was really wasn't a donut smell. No. It was really root beer. Root beer float. What really it what it smelled like. And there was a little bit of that bakery note in there. Um, but it's coming back this year as reindeer beer. So it's going to be kind of a, a, a Christmas holiday take on a root beer float. Um, really cool graphics, um, kind of Coca-Cola, Santa kind of vibes. Um, it's going to be nice. Um, burns beautifully, and that's coming in the Kringle line. Is that you get kind of like the red jars you did a few years ago? We're not going to do it in the red jar, but the label has a lot of red in it. So it's going to be okay. this kind of like metallic red and kind of the root beer. It. it it looks cool. I, I think you'll see it. We've got another fragrance we're doing that's going to have Santa Claus on it, and uh, I think they'll go really well together. So I can't tell if these comments are... Okay, there we go. Um, I'm in. Yeah. Ooh, a Boston cream donut. Yes. Thank you, yeah. Drew. That is an excellent oh, Yeah, that was there before. There was a Boston cream in that collection. <laughs> but I think if we build off of this jelly donut accord, or the donut accord that we have there, and just kind of... Yes you know, keep launching ones that are like subtle tweaks on it. That, that'll be good because um, I'm actually I'm burning the jelly donut right now. I, I was in the lab and I, I had to do it because we got this prototype in of a three wick version of, of a Kringle jar. And uh, I just had to steal the last two ounces of that <laughs> fragrance oil that I had because you guys bought them all on me. and I didn't even get a single one of the reserve line jelly donuts. And that was my favorite fragrance I've been working on for the last few years. So it's coming back though. I promise. I promise. And uh, yes, we are going to do the mercury jars again this year. Um, I think we're going to launch a few new fragrances in them. Um, but are there any that everybody wants to see come back? Clearly we're going to do Christmas again. That's like you know, our number one selling fragrance for the last decade. It's just such a staple, but anything that you'd want to see come back in the. Uh, Wishing for Christmas, please. Yeah. On it, on it. That one was a really big surprise with how well that, that one sold. So I'm, I'm glad that you liked that one. Yeah, that one is amazing. So Christmas good. Girl is my favorite. Banana. I'm actually working on one for next year. Uh, that's a Bananas Foster. That's Ooh. really nice. That's going to be popular with uh, some folks. There's this new liqueur um it's this french liqueur that i was at a speakeasy and they made these um banana old fashions and they were just unbelievably good i don't know if if you guys ever drink old fashions but this um this french banana liqueur smells just like fresh baked banana bread without the bread portion it's just that lovely banana smell not that uh fake synthetic banana and i think we're going to try to base it off of that of course so blue spruce folks want that to come back so how did everyone like the blue spruce from last year i got some kind of mixed um reactions on the blue spruce it was literally the exact same fragrance but i think the way that it blends with the soy it was releasing kind of the uh, the top notes and the base notes a little differently than the paraffin would so it, i think people were saying that it smelled different a um, couple people said that they were getting like some cinnamon notes in there, which maybe was a, you know, a contamination from the previous run. Maybe like they got the absolute first candle that was poured off the line or something. And it had a little residual uh, fragrance from the previous one, but we typically do a really great job of clean out in between runs. Um, but how did everyone like the blue spruce? Uh, someone said it had a weak throw. Wendy said she got the cinnamon. Interesting. Okay, so we got to have it a little stronger this year. I mean, that one, that one is a, a natural Siberian fir oil. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty basic in terms of like the, um, the accords in it. So maybe we can punch it up a little bit. But I mean, people were asking for it. So I wanted to give you the exact oil that we used to use. I didn't want to like, you know, modify it. Um, but I don't know. Blue Spruce was my favorite in the Mercury oil. Then got wheat throw. So I don't know. What do we think? Just add a little more of the oil in there and hope for the best or, or do a modification. Hmm. 
a donut worry and a 10 strength and throw. Donut worry is a good one. I always have a hard time getting light vanilla scents to like be as strong as like, you know, chocolate. It's just like inherently vanilla is a little bit on the, the lighter side, you know? Um, I don't know. Have you ever had like a really intense, pure vanilla from any company? Like what's like your, your best performing, you know, vanilla cone type or, you know, French vanilla or, you know, something that's a, a pure vanilla that you say, wow, that was a 10, 10 out of 10 for throw. Cause I have not been able to, um, to see something like that before. I think my best vanilla performer was the, and I don't even know that it's like the purest vanilla, but the Henry Bendel vanilla bean. Okay. Yeah. That one for me has been the strongest. Um, okay. And it's, it's one of my favorite vanillas ever. Like I, I was really bummed when those guys went away, but like, that's a great vanilla. And I think that that one definitely has a lot of like oomph behind it for sure. Okay. I'll have to take a look at uh, the fragrance profile on that and see if there was anything that was, you know, making it lift. Cause typically like for me, I find I need something else with the vanilla to get it to kind of, you know, more bakery note or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Any plans for Bayberry coming back? Bayberry. I had not given that a whole lot of thought with the last time we did the Bayberry was in those red jars with the kind of funny, um, or no, um, the um, Nativity one, Guy That Night, I think it was, from two years ago, the three-way. Okay, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. That one was Bayberry, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm taking suggestions, maybe in the Mercury line. Yeah, and with the green, that'd be nice, or the silver. That'd be good. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> Halloween spoilers, vanilla latte, stellar, yeah. Hmm. No, uh, what about bringing back like the we had talked before like last year that you were going to bring back like barn board and archives mm -hmm. and that whole set of candles so that's my hope is to bring them back uh, and do some limited releases in the painted jars so i think that that'll be a lot faster and easier for us to react to and and, and get them out but production right now is slammed i think we're scheduled out through august right now so we are literally like I have no time to slide anything new in that hasn't been already pre-planned right now, um, which, you know, good problem to have, but, you know, I like to come up with new stuff and be launching it all the time. So it's kind of, I don't know. I, I wish we could slide a little bit more in there. And uh, what about seasonal releases, right? I know you, you uh, previewed some Easter stuff. We do have some Easter lines coming. Um, Three fragrances for Easter. Uh, I posted about that the other day, and that that was the run that we were doing for all of the new painted three wicks. So you were seeing that that, that was a, about half of the new thirty that are coming. So in a, in a short amount of time, you're going to see a lot of painted three wicks coming to the website, which I'm excited about. And I think I think people are really going to love the look, the new patterns. Um, you know the right. This is this a three orange. Yes. Yeah. The painted oh, jars. I just. Personally, I don't think can be beat in terms of the look and aesthetic of them. They're just so pretty. And, you know, that's actually painted on there. So that's not coming off. And um, I don't know. It just elevates it for me. The The three wicks also have new burn labels. So, wait, here's a spot. Oh, right. With the set notes on them, right? Notes. Um, we're going to a bigger one. Too, so you can see more of it. Um, printing these in-house with all the fragrance notes. So that's that's a nice welcome change in my opinion. I like that. Um, but yeah, lots of new, lots of new. Let's see. Kringle is giving other brands a run for their money. Trying to, trying to. It's um, you know, it's a tough competitive world out there in the candle world, and I think um, you know, rising tides rise all sh uh, raise all ships. You know, that kind of a mm -hmm. saying. So if we're doing something right, I, I hope other people are are watching and you know improving the candle world because more candle buyers is good for everybody, right? Um, I don't really like to have a adversarial relationship with other, other candle companies. You know, we, we manufacture for other companies. We are always trying to set the trends and create a better mousetrap for everybody. So, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about this year and I don't know, I'm just really excited about these big guys. This is like my, my new pet project that I'm just really, really excited about. So cannot wait for you guys to get these.
So there was a question um, from Drew about what the fragrance is on that balloon candle with the balloons on it. Uh, that is a birthday cake. So it's like a happy birthday candle. So it's kind of like our nice little something that you can give as gifts or if somebody has a birthday that signed up, you know, we may or may not be sending them out, you know, that kind of a thing. Ooh, I'm really excited about birthday cake. So that one, that one will be nice. Um, similar to the Cosmic Cupcake, because like to me, Cosmic Cupcake had a really nice birthday cake, kind of a smell like that vanilla kind of lemon cake. Um, I think it's kind of similar. It's kind of like our old frosted cake. So it had a little bit of that vanilla cake in it. We love a St. Patrick's Day line with fields of clover. I, I was trying my best to get one of those done this year. I don't know if we're going to be able to slide it into production, but I, I agree. I would like that as well. Um, in the old uh, fresh cut grass that we used to do, yep. Brett, Brett's been on me to, to get one of those going. <laughs> Run the four wicks, ready to buy. All right. Well, I have, um, I have about... 15 jars so you know they're not going to last very long these are for testing for now but um i promise if uh if all goes well and the reviews are are good and and these two like them i am going to be doing my best to get these out as soon as possible yeah uh heather's giving kudos to your uh, employees there they uh, they really are the best uh, yeah they, i i love <laughs> the notes that they write um you know they really try to develop a personal relationship with everybody and um, Jamie gets a lot of credit for that. She started that, um, you know, years and years ago and, um, she's, she's, she's one of the best. So we, we really love working with her. She does a great job and she loves her job. So I'm happy. Yeah. Um, do you have any updates or can you share any updates on what's going on with the, uh, Kincaid line? So our first launch is going to be in October. It's going to debut on HSN. We're doing three fragrances and a country candle soy kind of style, but it's going to have the Kincaid photos, um, Kincaid, you know, decked out. And they're also going to be selling uh, photos and some other um, some other products along with the candle. So we're kind of part of this larger group that's going on. Um, so that's kind of exciting. And then I think in 24, there's going to be a lot more action with, with that line. So we'll see as long as everything goes well with that, it's going to be very limited, um, but really beautiful paintings. And, you know, the label art is stunning and um, I'm pretty pumped about it. So we'll see how that goes. Are they actually labels or are they painted? Those ones are going to be labels, okay. um, you know, with, with art that's, you know, licensed, you really have to get the detail on it. Right. And, you know, the painted jars, the DPI, like the, the detail is just not quite as um, high for photographic realism. So we wanted to go with, with a, with a label on those ones. Nice. Okay. Let's see. Blueberry everything. Um, you know, one I'm also working on a license right now for peanuts, which is kind of a cool thing. Ooh. So that will be cute and interesting. I'm, I'm working on that for a major retailer right now. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that that works out, but we're in the design phase for that. So very nostalgic. <laughs> so that could be fun. Let's see. Room sprays. I've been working on room sprays for years. I have a machine that I bought to make them and it has been sitting in my warehouse for like three years now and I have not dusted it off to make them yet. Um, it's brand new. And um, th the problem is, is that sales just keep going well and, you know, we're just so busy. It's hard to, it's hard to stop the presses and get someone to say, all right, let's go make room sprays now instead of neglecting the orders that are already in house for the candles. But I am working on room sprays. I'm working on car fresheners and I'm working on reed diffusers. Those are the three um, product line extensions that I'm working on. And I have a, a sample of one of our reed diffusers in our bathroom right now, and it's almost too strong. So I've got to kind of work on that. I've never really had a reed diffuser that was too strong, um, but I think we've got to dilute the fragrances down because it's, it's like you're tasting it in the, in the small space. It's almost for like, you know, a, a room like this size instead of the bathroom. Um, so going to work on that a little bit, but car fresheners are a big one. Um, I'm really excited about getting those made. And, and instead of just ordering them from a company, we're going to be making them. So 99.9% .9 of companies out there that are launching air fresheners, they buy them through a company that specializes in just manufacturing air fresheners, kind of like we do for candles. But we wanted to have the control of the quality. So back in the day, 
um, there was a lot of skepticism as to whether or not they were actually putting as much fragrance oil on the boards as they claimed to be. And I ended up visiting one of the factories and I was watching them make our product and you were able to pull, you know, an air freshener off the line and weigh it to see how much fragrance oil was actually getting on it. And they were making them at like half the, the dosage that it was supposed to be at. So that was really frustrating, which is why I've always wanted um, control over our own products. That's why we've never outsourced. That's why we never, you know, go overseas to, you know, um, right now the, the hot place to make candles is Vietnam. You know, it's the, it's the cheapest way to go, but you have no control over the quality and it's really hard to, um, to let that go as a candle perfectionist here. Um, I would never do it. So I want to bring everything in house. Um, and my long-term goal for the company is to kind of vertically integrate. So, you know, I'd love to start making our own packaging. I mean, we're doing all of our own, you know, painting of the glass here and decorating. So I want to add to that and have, you know, a spray decorating line to do all the colors so that we don't have to wait for our reserve line and get backed up with, you know, the mm -hmm. glass getting painted. Um, so that's kind of my goal is I want to vertically integrate. Maybe we do our own boxes and packaging like that. Um, and, you know, we'll see. What, is uh, there was a, there was a what are we not doing, Drew? <laughs> uh, there was a question Ashley had about um, wax melts. Any yeah. plan to uh, modify them, improve them? I know some so, folks, you get like a few hours out of it and each cube yeah. and that's it. So we probably about six months ago made the adjustment. We added a lot more fragrance oil to the blend. Um you know, I'll be curious to see what people think of the new ones. Uh, it's probably got about 30% more fragrance in it than what we had previously, which was already quite a lot. Um, you know, in my, in my opinion, um, it was a lot, but you know, wax melts, the nice part about them is that, you know, you don't have to burn it. So you don't need the, the chemistry to work to, you know, to actually burn it. So you can, you can put a lot more in there uh, without it creating a problem. So we're going to give that a shot. We're going to see what people think of the new blend, but um, you know, with us going away from paraffin, we are also going to have to redevelop our wax melts eventually. So I've got enough to kind of get us through this year, but our daylights and our wax melts are going to need to get uh, revamped and just putting the soy in there is not going to work because it's too soft. So, you know, you'll be, you'll be squeezing it out and it'll get all over your fingers. Mm -hmm. It won't, it won't be that nice. Um, so I'm working on a couple new blends for the daylights and the melts. And, um, you know, that will be a big deal over the next year. Cause I got to get it right. Quality keeps us buying. It's appreciated. Oh, thank you. Yeah. American made. Yeah. It's, you know, it's tough, you know, China, you know, in the candle world, it's um, China actually uh, does a decent job of, of making candles. They, you know, their quality is okay, but there's a 100% tariff on importing Chinese candles. I don't know if you knew that. It's been like that for 30 years or so, yeah. um, which I'm fine with, <laughs> you know, that, that works for me, um, keeps us alive, keeps us in business, but uh, not on the Vietnam candles. So that's, that's the one thing, um, you know, that's where a lot of the, you know, uh, brands like, uh, I don't want to name brands, but. Uh, well, we just, we just had that big recall um, from Walmart. That just I don't there. think was a Vietnam candle. I think that that's made in New Jersey, actually. So I believe those are made at Star Candle, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Star, yeah. I think those are made domestically, but I could be wrong. And I, I read the recall and it was like three candles that the wicks got a little close to the edge and the glass yeah. broke. And I was thinking to myself, boy, that's, that's kind of an aggressive move to do a full total recall on, on that over a couple candles. And I don't know, that was, that was interesting to me. I, I, I didn't see it personally. Um, but that's a lot of candles to recall where, you know, maybe a jar got dropped in shipping or something like that. Maybe it had a crack yeah. in it. Could have been a, you know, an issue with a couple pieces of glass. I don't know. That's um that's always, um, you know, touchy subject with recalls. You want to be safe, but you want to be realistic as well. So I don't know. We've never had to do that. Uh, let's see. It's on the next reserve collection. Oh boy. Um, what's coming next? Might have to look that up again. <laughs> Got some interesting, interesting ones. There's a really interesting new orange fragrance that we're doing. Um, oh. I don't know if that's going to make it on the next batch, 
but it's like, it's unlike any orange that I've ever smelled. Very little orange. Like if I gave it to you, you'd say that doesn't have orange in it, but the label has got a big orange on the front and it's very pretty, but it's, it's like a, an orange cologne. Hmm. It's like Abercrombie and Sicilian orange and something else had this sophisticated baby and made this really unique fragrance. Abercrombie, it's the only Abercrombie one. Fierce, uh, f- fierce. Yeah. Like a fierce, fierce, fierce esque. It's not fierce, but it's like, it's unique. And it's, it's one of those that, you know, you crack it open and you stop and you, you have to smell it a few times. So I'll be curious to see your reaction, Melanie, because I know Sicilian orange is up there for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and if, so if you ever get rid of that, you might fight me. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I agree with you. I agree with you. It's so good. Yeah. Amazing scent. Uh, so there's a question here. Uh, another company is going into to Walmart. Will, uh, will you guys ever go into uh, brick and mortar? Um, you know, I'm open to it. You know, the, the biggest problem with brick and mortar, especially like with Walmart is you have to hit certain costs for them. So, you know, a three wick candle at Walmart, they're probably going to want to sell it for 11 bucks. Yeah. And then you're going to have to, you say less. Yeah. yeah I saw the new ones are like six ninety seven. So, you know, that's less than what it costs me to make that candle. So the only way you can do that is huge volume, cheapen your stuff. So you can't put anything good in that. I mean, you know, you can't use high quality fragrance oils. You can't put it in at a decent percentage so that you're going to get good performance. You certainly can't use the wax that we're using. Um, It's just really hard and everyone's got to make a margin. And I get that, but you know, Walmart and some of those big guys, they just they take all the life out of the brand and it's so much volume that if you commit to it and you go in and you go all in and then they dump you, you could go out of business really quickly um, because, you know, you got to put all your eggs in one basket and you, you've got to, you know, drive your production. I mean, Yankee has done that. They have a huge facility dedicated to Walmart now. Um, and, you know, I don't have any inside information. It's just what I'm hearing and what I see. But that is a scary thing to, to put a lot of eggs in, in one basket and go away from, you know, smaller independent accounts that, you know, if you lose one, it's no big deal. If you gain one, it's no big deal. But if you lose Walmart after, you know, 10 years of working with them overnight and they just shut off the faucet, that can be really tough. My dad um, had something like that happen to him at Yankee back in the day where he had a huge account. They, they put in a gigantic purchase order and he had to stop everything that he was doing and work for three months to produce it. And then they canceled it on him. And it, it literally almost put him out of business because he was stuck with, you know, I don't know, 50,000 root beer candles that nobody wanted because that's what they wanted. They, that's a they, great one. I like the old root beer candles. I know, I know. But it was at that time that wasn't a popular one. And um, it, it literally almost put him out of business. So he always cautioned me not to go into big boxes, um, you know, especially if, if it's a large percentage of your sales, cause they can, they can love you and then they can leave you just as fast. So, um, so there's some, there's some comments in here. I think what people are saying other, you've, we've seen you in other stores, but that's a different story, right? That's your wholesale business. Mm-hmm. Not, not actually you're in, like a brick and mortar. That's a, Hold on, I want to say that one more time. What, yeah. Missed that. Hello there. There are some people in here commenting that they've seen your products in other stores. Mm-hmm. But I think what that is, that's just your wholesale business. Yes, and we love wholesale. We we want to yeah. you know continue to grow that and work with you know independents um, because you know you can partner with them and they can make good money off of selling the candles. We can work with them and we can provide it and still put the best ingredients in our products. That's that's really where it is for me. If I have to cheapen our products and make them subpar just to get into these big accounts, and it's just not worth it for me at that point. I mean, they provide a lot of volume, but you know, I'm here to make a good product, not to squeeze every dime out of it. You know, so I, think a lot of people I would rather grow the website. That's really my my direction. Go direct to everybody, and then we can be the best price and the best quality, and you know, be promotional and do all that. So that's my that's my take. Um, I feel like most people shop online these days anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, the biggest hurdle is you can't smell the candles. Yeah. That's the biggest mm-hmm. hurdle. So I'm uh, with the, with the air freshener program, we're buying a machine to kind of do the wrapping. I'm really working on a smeller sample 
that's kind of one of the things that I want to figure out is like a really inexpensive way of delivering fragrance to people. Um, I'd be curious to know what everyone thinks about this. So um, imagine just, you know, card, card stock in a little one and a half inch by one inch, you know, rectangle, print the name of the fragrance on it. Very, very basic. It's not going to be, you know, colorful and pretty like an air freshener, but it's got to be fast and for us to print in house and cheap. And we will dose it with the fragrance and wrap it like a little tiny, you know, mint, like a, you know, like an air freshener package, but smaller and something like that, you know, probably we could, you know, charge my, my, my goal would be to charge for these samples on the website. So let's just say we're charging I don't know, 25 cents, 50 cents, something like that for, for the sample card. If you buy 10 of them, for instance, say hypothetically, say it was 50 cents and you buy 10 of them. So that's five bucks for the sample. I would put in a $5 coupon for the website. Okay. So basically it becomes free if you buy, but as soon as you uh, do something that's completely free, you can get a lot of bots on the website, you know, putting in orders for these, sending them all over the place. You can get depleted and like have people with zero intentions just buying, a, you know, 500 of these things. We want to deter kind of the non-serious um, sample requests. Um, so if we, if we charge, then we give you a coupon. I think that would be a really cool way of delivering fragrance through the Internet that... Um, you know, isn't detrimental to people. And, you know, we could throw them in just an envelope and, you know, post office it. So it'd be fast and easy. But what do, you, what do we think about that? I love that. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel like a lot of people use the daylights right now is to okay. just be able to test and see like, eh, am I going to like this in a larger format? Yep. Um, so the daylights have been great for that for sure. Absolutely. But, you know, at the same time, you know, it's it's not cheap to order a, a lot of daylights either. You know, they they're expensive for, for a small candle. You do get to burn them and you get, a, you know, a good fragrance performance out of them in a small space. Um, you know, I am a little nervous that launching these fragrance cards will definitely eat into our daylight sales for that reason. Um, but who knows? So uh, two questions back to the website there. So one. Um without these sample cards, what is like the current return policy? If you get a scent, you don't like it. And two, I don't think we ever really talked about this, but the free shipping kind of went away. It did go away. Um, that's because our shipping costs have more than doubled. Um, so we're trying to find a way where we don't have to charge a lot more money for the shipping, but it's hard when you hit that certain tier of, you know, you're buying a lot of candles, especially in a sale, you know, and it's, you know, half off or, buy one, get one free. And you've got, you know, 24 jars or something like that. And then, you know, shipping is like, you know, what are we charging? Seven bucks, seven ninety nine. Yeah, eight bucks. Yeah. Um, and then you hit that threshold where you're not getting that $8 to at least subsidize the shipping. I mean, our shipping costs have literally doubled. It might be for an order, you know, on sale with, with a bunch of jars. It, it could be as expensive as 50 bucks for me to ship that. Yeah, no, it's nuts. I mean, unbelievable and they're starting to kind of come back down it was just this insane uh trajectory of um costs in the last few years i mean my costs for the product have gone up by about 80 percent in the last two years for wax fragrance jars lids labels everything has gone up we've done everything we can to try to keep our prices you know at a reasonable rate um but everyone's going up i mean even yankee on their 22 ounce paraffin jar is $34. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Um, you know, so we're just trying to be fair. Um, but, uh, it really does help us, um, you know, just to have that little bit of subsidy for the shipping. Cause I think everyone just forgets how expensive shipping is with companies like Amazon that just eat it, um, because they're so big and they get crazy rates. I mean, their rates are way cheaper than what we can, uh, get shipping at UPS. I mean, because of their volume. So they've negotiated rates that are probably less than half of what I pay for the same exact service. Um, but it's just, it's a tough world out there. And without having to go drastically up in, in pricing um, on the candles, that was kind of our, you know, concession there. But we are planning to do some, um, some sales this year where we offer free shipping as, you know, kind of like a flash sale, like free mm -hmm. shipping and, you know, cause it becomes expected uh, and that's just the normal thing and and i don't know that was that was my 
my move, but you know, I know people are missing the free shipping tier, but it's, it's tough out there. Yeah. What happened with that and Melanie's custom Kringle candles. We're still working on it. You guys, you know, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> Brett really likes this one. <laughs> like, he's like, Damn it, Mike! That one should have been my custom scent. And yeah, you stole my scent. In the lab, he goes, <laughs> Mick, you're not gonna like this. He's like, uh, everything that Brett just sent me for his revision to the fragrance is basically exactly what we're launching in botanicals. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Brett's gonna think that we stole his ideas. <laughs> uh, sure, Brett's face on it and just yeah. repackage it. <laughs> Yeah, we can. I don't play those repackaging games. Um, no, no, no. Um, but we're working on it. So, so I got the revisions in. Uh, you, I think you spoke with John about adding a little more of like the earthiness, yeah. a little more dirt, changing it around a little bit. Yeah. So we're on it, Melanie. What's the update from you? I, I know that you were working with John on your last one. Did you yeah. did you land on on a final fragrance yet? I I think I think we're there. We're there. All right. I think we're there, but I still am like looking like the labels and like all of like the other stuff now is just like, that's overwhelming. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of options. Hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of thousands. I don't know of how you guys do that. Like I, I just like, I would get on the computer for like five minutes and just be like, I, I can't. <laughs> I do a lot of my ideating with a glass of wine in front of the TV and I'm just on my phone, just looking for ideas. Yeah. And um, sometimes, you know, you find some good stuff and you find some good inspirational ideas and you're like, you know what, that looks like it could be a good fragrance. And, yeah. you know, you just go from there, but maybe, you know, Maybe you guys get to do one of these jars as one of the first ones. That might be that might be kind of interesting if we can get the the jars in in time and you guys have the fragrances ready. Maybe uh, maybe that could yeah, be. Uh, I was kind of bugging you to be the very last paraffin candle off off the line. I know, but do you really want to be that one? <laughs> <Yeah>. I know. <laughs> Everyone's loving the soy, man. <laughs> but I mean, we could we could. I mean, I'm I'm here to. Make a candle that you really want. So we have some paraffin left. We can do it. The pitchforks might come out. They might. They might. All right. Any other? She's uh, Katie's curious about botanicals, even though I'm not a big floral fan. All right. Brett, you want to describe that one? Oh, man. Got it right here. Wait. There it is. I thought this one was really pretty. I really love it is look of this label. It is strong. I will tell you that it is very strong. What do you give it for a strength rating? Uh, it's up there, ten. I mean, like I, t I told you, my wife she like made me open all the windows in the house when it was freezing the other day because it was so strong. You know, I think we've got to get all the ambassadors and everyone on the same page about strength. You know, strength is a really yeah. tough thing to convey that it is. to people through the internet, you know, when you're just writing a, a, a blog post about it. So to me, when, um, when we do benchmark testing, I find a fragrance that I think is a 10 for me. And then I compare everything to that. And I think sometimes people don't, um, don't ever want to rate something a 10 because they're afraid of like, you know, comments or like feedback about mm -hmm. the strength. I mean, there's only so strong that a candle can possibly be. And that has to be a 10, right? That's maximum. Yeah. You know, um, it's not 10, like, uh, you know, an, an impossible feat to ever achieve. You've got to have a benchmark that you've burned before that you're like, that's a 10. And then you compare everything to, to that. So what's your, what's like a benchmark fragrance for you? That would be a 10. What do you think, Melanie? But any company, any fragrance, any, Anything you've ever burned before? Have you ever given a 10? Because you were like always in that six to seven and a half range. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like when Homeworks was first released over on QVC, okay. I feel like their initial three wick releases over there mm -hmm. did insanely well in terms of strength and throw. Like a lot of those I would put like in the like eight and a half, nine. Mm. somewhere around there they, they're not there anymore as we have all you, know have you ever given a 10 though as a rating oh first? i've never given it i don't think i've mm. ever had a 10 interesting okay so like what's the perfect strength for you like if you could say i want a candle to be here like what's your target 
For me, I think if I had like an eight, that would be ideal. I, okay. I, I because I, I also, do, I, I have a family. And so I, ha I try to consider the people in the house here. Mm -hmm. And I think if I, if I went any much, of, I, I think it would just be headache inducing for the rest of the people. So I mm -hmm. think if I had like a nice solid eight, like that would be, that would be perfect for me. So like, you know, as a manufacturer, when I hear eight, I hear 80%, which is like a B, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, or B minus even. So like, that's like, for me, when I've been like working on fragrances, when I hear strength ratings, you know, I, I kind of think about, about it out of like a hundred and like, a, you know, an A through. So yeah. but for you, an eight is like perfect. Like yeah, that's like that is that like very noticeable. Like when I, when I walk into my house, I want to know that there is like something happening. Like I, mm -hmm. I don't like subtlety. I'm not big on subtlety. <laughs> Got it. Right. How about how about you? What's like your perfect? So, well, from I'm like I'm like with Melly, right? My with the family. My wife, she's more sensitive to smells than I am. Um, we also have you know young kids in the house, so we don't want to with that. But I'm kind of with her. Like a, a seven, six or seven would be for like an everyday burn mm -hmm. in my house would be acceptable to everybody. Um, but when mm -hmm. no one's around, amp it up. Mm -hmm. I'm really nervous. You guys are going to, these are going to be too strong for you. Honestly. Like I, I, I think certain fragrances won't be, I think that it'll be absolutely perfect for your fragrance, Melanie, the, the Mona Moore that uh, we're doing for you. Cause you know, certain lighter fragrances that extra um, width and, and evaporation off the surface is, is needed for, for those lighter ones. You can't always make, you know, a smaller diameter two wick or three wick candle, you know, more potent sometimes the notes just don't come out you need more volume but um with other ones like botanicals i mean if you already thought the two wick was strong i mean this is yeah. like it's you know i think we might actually have a problem here <laughs> i don't know we might have to just pull back on how much we're putting in on these four wicks i don't know i i could not do that one in a four wick like that floral it, it... it's the highest in note yeah yeah, it's, it's the, the highest, highest, highest. It's the highest, highest thing with the green grass. It is perfect spring, mm -hmm. a perfect spring morning. Yeah, it's, so, it's definitely, uh, definitely the epitome of spring. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so everyone's saying six to seven is good. You know that that's really helpful because I see a lot of reviews for our jars in that like six to eight range, and I, I was always a little disappointed when I would see that. I'd be like, oh, it wasn't strong enough. Damn. <laughs> but, like, that's good to know that that's, that's where you like it to be. That's that's helpful for me. All right. Yeah, I love Hyacinth. Yeah, no one else makes it, so thank you for making botanicals. Yep. That's right, Jessica. So, this is an interesting comment. How about putting identifiers on the candle uh, to indicate the intensity level? Hmm. Oh. Boy, would I love to be able to do that but it's so damn subjective yeah. that I feel like it's hard to, you know, as a company to state an intensity level and say, you know, put yourself out there and say, this is what it is because who gets to rate it? Who gets to define it? Cause we're, we're loading everything at a consistent amount of fragrance oil. It's not like we're, we're always trying to get the most potent fragrances and put it in at the maximum percentage. Like that's what we do. So it's just, the inherent differences in fragrance oils, like certain ingredients are just going to be lighter. You know, vanillas are just not going to be like a chocolate. Uh, you know, it's just not going to be like that. Our, our pines are going to be really potent. The florals are going to be really potent, but other things are lighter. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a tough one. I don't know. Maybe we can come up with some kind of a review on the website where, you know, there's like an average strength of meter, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about our lab. When I first developed our, our, you know, candle burning lab. It was this big, beautiful building. And we have these scent booths that are clean rooms and we burn a candle in them and um, you can walk in and evaluate it. So they're all glass and walk in and the candle has been burning for one hour. We always do it at one hour increments so that it's exactly the same across all fragrances and you walk in and you evaluate it. Um, and when you're done, you flip a switch and it sucks all the air out of the room and you start over, which is really nice for turning through evaluations, especially when you have to do hundreds of candles uh, a week. Um, and I had a panel of people that would come in and everyone had these iPads. So they would rate the fragrance on likability, one through 10. 
And then they rate the fragrance one through 10 on strength. And those were the two factors that we really cared about. Is it strong? Is it likable? Because sometimes, you know, you'd have a fragrance that was really strong, but it smelled terrible. <laughs> You're not going to launch that. Um, and what happened was we had about 15 people that would rate it. Our best to sometimes, well, the worst had outliers, but most fragrances averaged out to be within 0.2 of each other. It was always like 7, 7.1. 7.2 because you had some people rated a 10 some people rated a 6 and and it was like we got no good data on the subjective it all flattened out and it all became the same damn average so we stopped doing it um it just didn't give us any good feedback and that was the problem so i, I do worry that you know by giving a strength a meter on the reviews that that also might happen where you get some people who are like, this is a 10, this is really strong and really great. And then other ones are like this candle sucks and it's a two. And then inevitably every single candle is going to be rated on the website 6.9. And it's just going to be the same across the board. And that, that's, that's the problem with averages is that it all averages out. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know, I would love to do that. I wish that there was a way to empirically measure a subjective subject. Uh, yeah, maybe you can go by open concept versus like, I don't have open concept here. So I have a room and a hallway room you know, and so forth. Maybe you break it out like that. Hmm. That's, you know, cause the sense going to perform better here than it is going to be in an open concept. True. True. Yeah, more and more um, condensed. That's why I think, um, you know, having you guys review the candles and, and all of our other ambassadors review them and do, you know, in-depth conversations with people is so helpful because they get to hear from you a real experience. How far did it go in your home? How big is your house? Where did you have it burning? How do you like the set? I mean, mm -hmm. it is so important for us to have people like you doing this for us um, because you, you give a glimpse into what the real world scenario is with these candles and your home and, and your excellent, um, you know, candle burners, you burn a lot of different brands. So it's not just us. You've got a lot of experience and, and, you know, you can give some, some light to people that, you know, don't know because it all averages out on the web. Yeah. It, so. it, I feel like it really does vary from home to home too. I mean, burning a candle in a small studio apartment versus like, you know, a McMansion or something like that's definitely going to be a big, that's a big range. Oh yeah. Huge. So. And it also depends on in the home, like where you position the candle. I don't think people quite realize like, mm -hmm. um, Huge. if you have, uh, I don't know if you, have you ever done like a sage smudge? Mm -hmm. So you burn the sage and then it's got the smoke and you kind of take it around every corner of your house, get rid of the bad juju. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sage is really interesting that that smoke, if you, if you don't mind that smell, it's a, it's an interesting way of seeing the airflow in your home. So just having that, you know, go through, you can see, okay, what direction is the air going from, you know, the AC or the heat, if you have forced hot air, or if you have a return somewhere, you know, if you put a candle right underneath a return, it's going to suck it right up into your system and then filter it and then spit it out and you're not going to have anything. Yep. But if you put it farther away from the return and if the airflow is wafting through the house, that's going to have a huge impact on the throw and the strength. Um, so it, AC is a huge factor in candle performance. And room temperature. Room temperature yeah. as well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I think I don't think that people consider airflow a lot of times. And sometimes I'll have conversations with people and I'm like, have you tried moving it? They're like, mm. no, because <laughs> I just always burn it here. And I'm like, try moving it. Like it might really make a difference. There are like, what was it? Ashley? Did Ashley say she has dead spots in her house? I totally have dead spots in my house. Like my dining room, it's like a black hole. Everything just like, whoop, like it stays yeah. right there. It's hard for stuff to travel out of that room because it, it, it just doesn't flow. Mm. Yeah. Maybe there's a return in there, taking the air back or, so, you know, something is just the positive pressure or negative pressure isn't, you know, it's not moving. Yep. Totally. Totally get that. Ooh, I'm burning sinful right now, and it is delicious. Sinful is good. That's the that's chocolate and peanut butter. That's, yeah, that's a good combination. I prefer the triple chocolate over sinful. Chocolates are like a, a, a tough one. People, you know, you got to get it just right because it can go off. Like when you manufacture chocolate in the factory, if you ever came in and smelled it, you'll never want to burn another chocolate candle. Just because of how intense it is, it yeah. goes kind of like... 
Yeah, I don't know. People don't right. manufacturing chocolate. <laughs> it's you so said cool. that last year but before you brought back peppermint cocoa. Yep. Yep. So I'm sure they love that then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really like the chocolates personally. Sinful is really nice. Um, I thought that was a unique take. And, and the peanut butter was nice. It wasn't like, I don't know, some, sometimes it can feel really artificial, but that one I thought was pretty good. Peanut butter and caramel. Thank you. What I really love about the Kringle candles is how consistent they are. It's rare to get um, get one off the shelf from Kringle or get get a one. Yeah. Um, that's what's nice about this new wax. It burns really consistent. I mean, you know, we used to have a lot of trouble with mm. consistency and burn. And, um, you know, some people say that uh, soy wax doesn't throw fragrance as well as paraffin or paraffin soy blends. And um, for me, I can understand where people are coming from with that to a degree. I think first burn, paraffin soy blend, a lot of fragrance in it. I think that that can outperform a soy candle, like on the first burn. But it's consistency throughout the entire candle. Um, you might get that punch of fragrance at the, at the very beginning, but a lot of times you get that puny wick syndrome. You're not getting any fragrance out of a candle that has a murky wax pool with little flames. You're not going to get anything. So I don't care how good it was at the first burn. If you don't get consistency top to bottom, what's the point? Like, great. I spent 20, 30 bucks on a candle, used it twice. And now it's toast. Um, that's why I love this yeah. wax because it is the same the whole way down. And if anything, I think that this wax gets stronger, the further down you burn it because it retains more heat. It's almost like putting it in a hurricane. So a little bit more heat to get that wax hotter is going to vaporize more fragrance off the surface and you're going to get more throw. So yeah. that's my take anyway, but how are you guys doing on time? I don't know how, how, how long you guys, uh, but you're marked for us here. Uh, Hang out. <laughs> yeah. We, we, I had I had figured an hour, but uh, it's it's going here, and folks have lots of questions here. Well, the next time we do this, we need to make sure that when nine o'clock rolls around, we all have a glass of wine in our hand. There I don't you know go. about you. <laughs> but it's only like six thirty here, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. See, it's nine. I was, I was getting a yellow jacket all night. <laughs> uh. Uh, so, yeah, someone said uh, to give uh, sweet and savory some love. I think that's a very unique fragrance that I haven't experienced in any other brand before. Something it like was that. unique, wasn't it? What do you What do you think it smells like? Well, I think it smells like when you go into Bertucci's and you get the bread out of the brick oven. Okay, I like that. Yep. Man, our Bertucci's closed. I missed. Started ours all of a sudden overnight. Man, ours is a really nice Mexican restaurant now. Um, Except do not go on a Monday because the mariachi is really loud. <laughs> uh, this must be like an East Coast thing. <laughs> yeah, probably. We don't, we don't have that bakery out here. All right. Yeah, it was what good. Else? Any other big questions for us for the night? Let's see. It is kind of pumpernickel, isn't it? It is. I, I totally agree with that comment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think if you want to uh, end it, Mick, here with whatever teasers you have left for the rest of the year, we you said 32 three wicks and these other vessels. And I, I think by the end of the year, you're, you're going to see over 60 fragrances, maybe more in the three wicks. Um, I'm just really loving this, um, this painting process that we have. And uh, I've got some really cool designs that are coming. I really love when it's, um, it's got depth to it. So a little bit of clear, a little bit of um, opacity and raised textural feelings, you know, like mm -hmm. the, um, cozy cabin that we did and that kind of plaid we've got a lot more of those plaids coming and it's just like it's almost addicting to kind of like rub your nails on it we got to do like a kringle candle asmr where you just sit there <laughs> yeah that blueberry the blueberry muffin one is like yeah so um really cool stuff with that a lot of cool halloween three wicks that are coming i'm pretty excited about those um you have a, a timetable for when you're planning to launch Halloween, or at least it's going to be years. earlier than ever this year, which I'm excited about. This will be the okay. first year that we're actually offering Halloween to wholesale and to our international partners. So that's exciting. Um, we're actually getting a little bit ahead of our development. So it's all done. Normally I'm scrambling uh, to get it all the development finished, but we really 
nice. put a lot of work into getting it done early this year. So that's exciting. Um, hopefully everyone likes it. The new stuff is, is pretty interesting. Um, what else? These jars. I mean, these new jars, these big guys are really my big focus. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful to see what people think of these. Um, the fragrance performance is stellar. I just think that they look really great. Um, so I don't know. What, what's everyone think of the price price tag? Are we are we absolutely crazy for thinking that we could charge forty five dollars for a thirty five ounce four wick? I mean, I think that's a fairly reasonable price considering what Homeworks and Nest and all these other companies are doing for their large formats, which um, you know are are big. But what's everyone thinking? We need this for price is fine price is fair and you know we're gonna do sales on it too i mean it's you know that's happy and reasonable i mean you know i think it's going to be that candle that really becomes the giftable candle i mean this thing is so pretty and so perfect like and it's going to come in its own individual box which is going to be pretty nice so it's not going to be like a super high-end box it'll be you know probably a white corrugate box but it'll have branding on it and nice you know nicely printed but it'll be in its own box because we can't ship this in the egg crate because they don't make one big enough for this and it won't hold up so this will be coming in its own box um do they have lids they will have lids they okay. will. um it'll be the same style you know glass lid that we've been doing um i'm trying to figure out because they're, they're big and i mean you know getting your hand around it is kind of challenging to get it off yeah. Um, so I'm working on trying to lighten it up, uh, by, you know, reducing a little bit of that glass. Cause I mean, you know how heavy our lids are now imagine that, you know, probably three and a half, four times that, that weight, um, yeah. big. So, but it's a really great gift and, you know, I'm excited for it. Um, speaking about gift, I wanted to see what people thought about this, uh, e-commerce boxes. So on our website, this holiday season, I was trying to figure out if we could pull this off. I want to print all of our boxes in a gift wrap. So like maybe after um, Black Friday, for Black Friday, we would make the switch. So instead of having the brown, you know, boxes with our logo and everything on it, we would do like a repeating pattern gift wrap that maybe has some Kringle logos sprinkled in it, but to make it look like a present and then oh. do the tape around it in like a, you know, maybe like a metallic red tape or some kind of thing that looks like ribbon. So you go over the box one way, go the other way. And now you've got basically this beautiful uh, That's cute. Art, art yeah. present. And I thought it would open it up uh, for gift giving, you know, uh, on the website. So make gift giving easier. So you put in an order for candles and you, you know, you check, is this a gift? And it's like, yes, goes in the gift wrap one, mm. just gets sent to people. So that was kind of a, a unique idea. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. As long as UPS doesn't do all their drawing and everything over it. Oh, they will. <laughs> but or that's something that I'm trying to figure out. Um, it can be really costly to do box printing, but I'm trying to figure out if we can make it make it happen. So, we'll so that'd be pretty now. Yeah, where do you see these 35 ounces fitting into the line? Are we going to lose some lose some stuff? Um, you know, it depends. I mean, I. I would love to say, yes, we would, you know, do a skew reduction because, you know, making so many candles is, is tough, you know, um, you know, more skews, more inventory, you got to hold. Um, and that just makes the cost go up for everybody. You know, we, if we have to say, I don't know, let's say we do the big one. All right. So that's a big one. That would be an addition. You know, this is not, you know, to get rid of anything, but you know, this would be an additional skew, but what other sizes are we going to do? Are we going to do a smaller four wick one are we going to do this medium kind of 22 ounce three wick one and these are kind of similar you know yeah. it's hard for you to see it burning right now but you know uh, how many different shapes and sizes can we actually offer you know sometimes you just got to say this is what we make and this is what we're going to sell for a while um but you know maybe maybe someday this goes away i don't know it depends on what the fragrance performances and what people like it, you know it's it's a tough one for me um because i love our two wick candles they burn fantastically they burn clean um but all i hear is we want stronger we want more fragrance um and you know if we if we do a four wick maybe that's the answer but i worry about 
things like Halloween. You know, when we do a single SKU launch of, you know, a decorated vessel, well, which one are we going to do it in? Do you think that Halloween would look good in this squatty Forwick with a smaller label? I mean, we've got those big, beautiful labels and the deco. Um, I think people would be uh, a little upset about Halloween and some of the special projects coming in just this. So then it's like, well, do you do it in this big guy? And now Halloween candles are $45, you know, that's. You need a witch's cauldron in that. That's a huge difference, you know, so that's, that's a struggle. Um, you know, I think that the three wick classic could probably be a nice size to kind of, you know, transition away from the two wicks, but because it's 22 ounces and burns a little stronger, a little, little, a uh, little more fragrance, but it's not going to be quite as crazy as the four wick. So I'm still mulling it all over. I'm really like torn here. This is eating me alive, trying to figure out which ones to do and what to get rid of. Please. Yeah. I have a question. How do the medium jars sell compared to the large jars? Are medium jars uh, necessary? Uh, we're planning on ditching those at some point too. Yeah, mediums and Kringle and Country, we, we we sell at least three or four times the amount of large jars compared to mediums. I mean, okay. the value is just, you know. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make sense when you're looking at the numbers, yeah. <laughs> placing yeah. an order for a medium when the large jar is like a couple bucks more. Exactly. And the problem is, is that it really doesn't cost us that much less to make a medium jar. You know, the jar is probably only two or three cents less expensive to get than the big one. Uh, I mean, it's not yeah. negligible. The lid's the same. The label yeah. is within a couple pennies, you know, cause it's about labor time, you know, time to manufacture. So yeah, the fill is less. So two of the ingredients, there's less of it, but the labor to make that candle exactly the same, you know, and most of the ingredients are exactly the same. So it's just, it's, it's hard to, um, to give much of a, of a discount, even though the candle has half as much wax. Yeah. So maybe large jar and three wick. Yes. Yes. Large and three. Threes are not going anywhere. See, we can't do these painted designs on any of our classic jars because um, the machine that we use, this the sham uh, puts it too far away from the um, from the decorator. So you can't decorate these, but you can decorate the straight side. So these aren't going anywhere. I think this is a great product. This is going to be the value play for us. You know, a lot of fragrance, a lot of bang for your buck, beautiful design, um, you know, promotions, sales, that kind of stuff. We're going to do a lot with the new painted three wicks. Um, but, you know, hard to say about the two wicks. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. They are beautiful and they are a wonderful product and they are our best seller. But, you know, I've had to make this these tough decisions in the past when um, we used to make a single wick classic jar. So we had an eight ounce single wick and then a 16 ounce single wick as well. And that was the main Kringle candle. Um, and we just didn't get fragrance performance. It was so narrow. There was barely any uh, fragrance performance out of it. It was paraffin. It had less fragrance percentage in it. Um, so we went to the two wicks to get more, uh, more melt out, more wax pool. And that really helped. But we had to to stop making and stop selling our best selling skew at the time, because even though people were buying it and it was selling really well, we didn't think that they were getting the fragrance performance and they weren't coming back to rebuy. Um, so that's why we got rid of it. And, you know, we, we may be in that phase right now, but I love the two X and they, they perform great. And we don't have that performance issue now. It's more of a, you know, aesthetic, what, what kind of candle and what kind of jar do we want to go forward with? But um, I think we'll probably test the waters with these um, towards the end of this year and see what do people think. We'll let, we'll let the sales decide. You know what I mean? Uh, Ashley, want to know, is there going to be any kind of big sale on the paraffin coming up to make way for new stuff, for the new soy products? Um, we probably will have um, some sales on the, the country candle paraffin jars. Um, but we also have a lot of wholesale accounts that are still buying that. So we're going to be kind of transitioning and, and I don't have any time to make more candles right now. Uh, so it's, uh, it's kind of tough. So we're booked through August, like I said. Um, so even if we did sell out of them, you know, the, the normal course of, of remaking is going to take a little time. So we can't, can't do it too quickly, but yes, we will probably see some of that. Okay. So, all right. Well, any, any last minute ones or are we, uh, last minute questions? Everyone's saying keep the two wick. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, someone want to know, can you print these upside down if you wanted to print them 
Yeah. No, I wish you could. Um, it's because it goes into the machine in a cylinder form. So the whole thing goes in flat. So it doesn't matter what direction it goes in. It just has to be straight sided. It can be um, tapered. It can be anything like we can print the country jars. We can print anything that doesn't protrude out past the, um, the print edge. Um, a European website where we, where the candles can be purchased. So, you know, we, we've always worked with, uh, distributors overseas. Um, and you know, they are their own independent small businesses that, you know, are basically like a wholesale account that buy lots of volume and we give preferential pricing to, um, because then they have to sell them to other stores. So, you know, it's, it's tough. It's low margin for us. Um, you know, some, it, it's it's been a struggle to work with them because we don't control what they buy. We don't control, you know, what they do. Um, so it's, it's helpful for us to get that exposure and that sell through, you know, internationally. But, you know, we lack a little bit of the control and and the ability to say, hey, here's the new stuff. You have to buy it or not. And eventually someday maybe we'll partner with someone and do, you know, an, um, a centralized European warehouse that can help supply uh, e-commerce. But, you know, that's a big investment and we still have a lot of growing to do domestically before that. And the, uh, the exchange rate has been brutal on our distributors because um, as the dollar got really strong there, you know, they basically took a 30% haircut on, on everything that they were purchasing. You know, if their, if their currency goes down in value compared to the dollar, just inherently the product costs 30% more, which is crazy. Um, so it's, it's tough internationally, obviously shipping internationally to direct to consumer is difficult also um, because, you know, uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to do seven ninety nine flat rate shipping to London? Um, you know, that could cost us $150 for that, for that package. I mean, that could be crazy uh, depending on how heavy it is. So um, that's a big struggle. You know, a lot of companies just do it anyway and they just lose money on the ship or on the whole order, you know, shipping internationally. Um, and sometimes they do that because they're valuing their company on, you know, total sales versus profitability and things like that. But we're not big enough to be able to do that. And um, it's tough, but I hear you. I want to fix it. I want to come up with a, a solution for the international folks who love our products. Um, I just don't have a solution today, unfortunately. Yeah, the tariffs are brutal. Yeah. But um, cool. Everyone's saying well, thank you. It's been very informative. I agree. Love these lives. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. I had a wonderful time catching up with both of you. And um, I'm hoping that maybe you guys can post a little bit about these candles. I'm going to ship them out to you both tomorrow. So I know Melanie will get it sometime in 2024. <laughs> uh, and Brett, you'll have it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Is Oregon is always bringing it up the rear. It's fine. It's my role in life. I, I literally have a direct UPS path from where you ship to my house. It's crazy. <laughs> it's literally so fast. Uh, all right. Well, thank you both very much. I appreciate everything you do to help uh, promote uh, Kringle and, and get the word out there. So thank you very much. And um, love working with you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. All right, everyone. Okay. Good night. Have a good night. Have a good night, guys. See y'all. <laughs>